So we are looking at uh, the week going into Christmas. This is December uh, 20, starts trading on the 22nd. So I'm recording this on Saturday. Um, so Sunday we'll start trading. And I want to point out that Wednesday, Forex, currencies, equities, everything, Christmas Day is going to be closed. So trading in U.S. markets should exit all uh, in U.S. hours, I should say. All markets should be closed finally by uh, the U.S. equities close or futures currencies close. Uh, East Coast time, I think it's five o'clock. So, uh, and then we'll start again on Christmas night. So that'll be Christmas Eve that that trading closes. And then again, futures and currencies will open up Christmas night, uh, the evening that is Christmas, uh, the holiday, and then trade back in. The thing about this week is that it is very uh, light volume. It's mostly just traders out here. There's not many uh, central banks, there's not many people working in finance that are going to be making and taking positions in the market. Maybe individual managers who need to catch up or things like that, but generally speaking, the big institutions, uh, the people that are not interested in day-to-day -day moves or even week-to-week -week moves, they're most likely gonna be on vacation. So they're the big volume. The four to five percent, the traders are going, that usually uh, take up the majority, or you know, traders take up about four or five percent of the average daily volume. We're gonna be the ones who are providing the most volume liquidity this week. That being said, that's not a good environment to be trading. Most likely what's gonna happen is you'll have one or two assets that are gonna move if they do at all, and if, and those are gonna be the ones that are gonna get chased. So um, kind of keep that in mind. We're gonna go over the bigger picture. I'm gonna start with currencies and show you how I set up my my ideas and what I'm gonna be focusing on, what how I look at each one of those based on my market regimes, based on the, the you know, the, the longer term picture of the, the asset itself, and then go from there. So what I've done is I have a basket of the seven major currencies. So it's the dollar versus the yen, the franc, the euro, the pound, the Aussie, the CAD, and the Kiwi. I add those all together, divide the uh, yen by 100, uh, and then I add those all together and then I divide by seven. So I get an average for the US dollar. Basically it's a basket of the major currencies of the US dollar. And that gives me an idea of how I'm looking, uh, what I'm looking at. So first things first, let's just kind of take a look back over the last uh, last two years, basically. Um, we're in a nice uptrend on the dollar. Okay, that's that's just an uptrend. No reason to get angry about it because that's higher lows and higher highs. So it's only been recently that we've been putting in these lower highs and lower lows. You see we've done it here as well. Uh, back in the summer, uh, we started to get weak on the dollar and then, but that longer term trend continued. So what we're noticing is yes, the dollar is getting weak, but what I also wanna point out is look at that reversal. We have some good reversals down in here. We, we've we had, uh, it's not very often that you get such a good reversal. And, and you know we move from compressed volatility to expanded volatility. Uh, we went compressed. We probably were looking to get long somewhere in there and got stopped out on that. So bears were feeling pretty bullish or pretty you know positive with themselves right around here. And then they just couldn't deliver anymore. Bulls came back, they fought back hard, and it's been sideways since. So what we know is that bears took control, they lost control. Now bulls have an opportunity to regain control and regain this trend. Notice it, it did, you know, we did have that weakness here and it, you know, it reversed and came back and reversed and we, we had a nice big move on the dollar in the, in the summer to, to October. Uh, so we might have a similar sort of situation where that would be a higher, uh, higher low if we do that. If we break below here, 
that is a lower low and that's a significant low, I would say. So if we can, if we break below that one, that would signal to me that we're gonna start looking to take more bearish trades on the dollar uh, and the trend actually might be in place. We have a bear, uh, a bear quiet regime going on here and that's, it's a little bit different in currencies than it is with equities. It's just, um, you'll notice that if you're, it, it's a little bit more macro. If you're in a, if you're transitioning, you'll notice things, but most likely you're gonna see, like we can see this was bull quiet from bull, actually from bearish, to bull, uh, bull quiet to bull volatile, to bull quiet to neutral bullish, and generally just bull quiet the whole way from uh, 2019 all the way through. Just a nice, easy, uh, oh, that's bad news, and then look, we, we rally. Uh, so bad news has an effect, but it doesn't last all that long. So let's move on to the Euro. Again, I'm gonna show you how I, I have these segmented into the entire basket. And let's, as always, uh, first things first, we just notice there's a lot of red down here, okay? So that's that's bear quiet, bear volatile. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's less important on the quiet volatile side on currencies than it is on uh, equities because currencies are, are trade differently. But you'll see that big rally we had in, in 2017 in through 2018 really got just, it's done. Uh, you know, it, it, it was a, a really strong move and it came off of a lot of uh, j just, you know, high volatility banging around to get lower. And it seems like there's just an equilibrium right in this general uh, area here. So in the basket, it's 1.26, but if we bring it out a little further, we can start to see this is a definite downtrend. Bulls did come in and and rally it up. They they have been it's it's been slightly lower lows and lower highs, which is just the trend in the euro. We're in bear a bear regime. So generally speaking, I will take counter trend bounces off the lows in the euro as we as we move outside this range, and that's pretty common, as you can see, when we get outside that range, our failed breakout setups come into play. Uh, but I will be looking to, when it gets to the top of the ranges, I'll be looking to get short a lot. Uh, I'll be looking for the shorts a lot quicker than I am on the longs. So we've got dollar in question, euro almost without a doubt is in a bear trend continues to hold up. Now the pound is very interesting because that has been um, ever since Brexit, uh, as you can see, that, that really fell apart. And what we've done is every time we have, when, when things are to normal, we're in this little range where we are right now. When things are a lot more normal, we end up in this range. This would have been the uh, the Brexit time frame, okay, and then the other highs up here. This would have been the eurozone crisis and the the global financial crisis. Uh, you know, we had highs in oil, global financial crisis, and eurozone crisis. But what happened is you can start to see that we have this median area that when times are normal, we end up hanging out down here. So what's interesting is we have Brexit news this week and last week. We had, we had the big general election there in the UK. And this pattern, we, I was shorting in this area. I got, I got short here and I got stopped out at one of these here a day or two before the election. I was kind of pissed because it eventually hit my price target, but it only stayed there for a second and then moved back up. And then we had that huge, it was like a two and a half percent day on the, on the pound dollar. And then what happened on uh, Monday, so whatever, wherever we are, I think Monday I put it, this was printed and I got short here. I got short on the pound dollar uh, itself and, and we've really put in a, a good move here. That's, that's at least a four hour move that I'm currently up on that trade. But uh, we're in a bullish area and there is a lot of election news coming out of there. And honestly, you know, it could be that the pound is something this week that, that just 
sucks all the air out of the room. Maybe something big happens. Anyway, pound's looking a little more bullish. I took that failed breakout trade. It worked out phenomenally. It very much reminds me of crude earlier this year when crude, um, that uh, the attack on the Saudi refinery, and it gave back everything. That news had us up 15% and then gave back everything. Very similar pattern on, on cable, on pound, on sterling, however you want to call it, uh, where it came back to this, this area of low volatility. So this is where things tend to want to be, and I think we may just hang out here until something is resolved. They are saying that a full Brexit at the end of January, regardless of if any deal is done, so uh, that's, that's aggressive and uh, could, could continue the volatility. Let's take a look at the yen. Uh, yen is in a nice downtrend uh, after, after a really good uptrend. So pretty much when the dollar turned, the yen turned. Uh, and so it's, it's in a nice downtrend. We have broke below the, the previous you know, lower low that we had. Uh, both of these lows, and we're right there. So I'm, I'm seeing more weakness in the yen, I would say, and we moved into the bear territory here. So there could be a definite shift on that, but you'll notice that reversal pattern as well. Uh, bears had it, and now we're basing. Uh, we may get a, a, you know, a pop back up, but the trend is, the trend is lower. So looking at the franc. Nothing to see on the franc. That is sideways, and look, I just I just see sideways on the franc. I don't. It, it's a slight downward trend. The same in the same you know in, in September, August September reversal. Uh, pretty much the the dollar, the the yen, and the franc are kind of trading in that that downward range. Whereas the euro is a defined downward range, and the pound is starting to go higher. Taking a look at a CAD. It is, that's been a strong uptrend. We broke below, we put in a lower low, lower highs, lower lows, but we also put in a, a complex double bottom and we put in a new high, higher high here, I should say. So maybe some weakness on CAD, but I will point out that there was some bad numbers this week, um, some bad economic numbers in Canada and it rallied. So when we look at the regime we're at here, this is still, in my opinion, we're in bull quiet or, or generally a bullish, even with these little dips here. Um, with these little dips here and bad news failing to wreck the market, that signals to me we're in a bull quiet and you want to be long CAD more than you want to be short, generally speaking. Taking a look at Aussie. Aussie itself has, you can kind of see that it's starting to base and, and go higher on the, uh, on the SQN and the price has started to go higher. Even if we get bad news out of the Aussie, we should expect things to start being a little bit more uh, bullish. This is a long, long downward trend, a very solid downward trend. A lot of people calling for 40 cents Aussie dollar conversion, don't really care. Um, personally, I see this as it looks like it's basing. And even if we just go sideways for a while, that might be quite useful. In fact, that's kind of what I'm seeing here is just a lot more sideways action. Uh, but if we start putting in higher highs, that could be interesting. And then finally, let's look at the New Zealand. And that is obviously, it got ugly. It got really ugly. I will say that a lot of ugly, but being so sensitive to the Chinese economy, China numbers are starting to look a lot better. Um, and we're starting to get some, you know, this is a big move in Kiwi, uh, higher highs, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. We're going to want to see, uh, this to flip to the green side and just start taking, you know, looking a lot better than it has this look, this to me, this is bulls are in control. Boom, 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 boom. This is just, this is actually bull quiet type trading, but it, it, it notice it's not like highly volatile. No, it's not like rip, rip, up, down, rip, down. It's like big move, consolidate, big move, consolidate, little trickle, little trickle. It's not, um, it's not big move, down move, big move, down move, down move, down move, big move, down move, down. It's 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 trending nicely. So, paying attention there. 
Uh, let me take a look at the trades I'm currently in. I am short pound, dollar pound, and let's clear our... So I got short, this is a failed breakout pattern. This is my bread and butter. This is my swing trading machine. This is how money is made in our family. Uh, basically, that would have been Sunday we printed this one. Monday I took the short, had a big 1.5% down move on the day. That was uh, a massive headwind and it's just been continued ever since. And I've, I've just trail stopped this thing. And if I, usually what I like to do is I'll take it out. If I'm getting good trending move like that, I'll take it to a three day or a weekly and see where my next level of, of resistance is on the midline. That's about 128. Uh, and you can see that's where things start to, they were consolidated before the breakout. And then I'll go ahead and t take a look at the weekly. And same thing, that's where stuff started to, consolidate so I would be expecting this area like right, right where we're at is where we're expecting things to calm down uh, but there is a definite potential down to 126 if you're you know we low to highs uh, that would put us in the middle of that range and probably uh, as, as we looked on the bigger uh, pound chart itself when things are calm they're either up in this area here down in this area here. So we're, uh, we're a little bit lower on pound, uh, on its on the pound dollar, but it's looking pretty, pretty ugly. Uh, let me get to, I took a, show you where I'm at on this. I got in on Aussie short on a failed breakout, failed vol breakout, I should say. Uh, we had our compressed volatility, Price closed outside it. We had a reversal bar inside bar that uh, basically was my setup because uh, this one's too too expensive. Uh, the distance to midline was not there, whereas this one distance to midline based on this was a lot better. So I got in short on the next day, had a reversal candle, and we've moved higher. Now, what does that signal to me? Fail breakout, not working. Let's see where we're at. We're in a bull quiet. We've moved into a bull quiet, uh, but it's after a lot, so it could just be a head fake. But what's interesting here is when the best setups in the world fail, that's telling you something. So when the failed breakout, this is a very high win rate system, high expectancy. This system prints money almost, uh, if you can effectively manage it. If it fails and we close above here and I get stopped out, what that signals to me is my look at the Aussie, the, the bigger picture on Aussie, is that it is in a bull quiet regime because that is the biggest characteristic I have of a bull quiet regime. Best shorts in the world fail. Bad news doesn't sell off. And so with, with that in mind, if, if this doesn't fail and break, if, if this thing does fail and breaks to the midline and, and kind of just bangs around, I'm fine with that. Uh, I, you know, that would be a great trade. But if this thing, if this thing reverses and keeps going higher, we're going to have a vol breakout trade and we're going to be getting long the Aussie. So you have to understand that like if, if you monitor your trades and you know what your win rates are and you know what to expect out of things and they break down and then you can kind of look at everything else and realize that, Hey, it's shifted regimes. That's, that's tells you something. It tells you that, uh, you've shifted regimes and so mean reversion trading is no longer in play and now you're looking for that trending type of, uh, of setups. And so we would be looking for, because uh, you can see it, it had this massive bounce. Mean reversion worked, higher lows and higher highs. So uh, we're probably right at the end, uh, we're either right at the end of this like counter trend bounce and we're gonna look to fall or this trend might take over and we're gonna be and we're gonna be in a nice trending recovery move on the Aussie. And then my last trade that I'm in is, uh, I'm short Euro Yen. Now, as we looked at earlier, the Yen is looking weak. So by being short Euro Yen, I'm actually short Euro Long Yen. 
Uh, and it's worked, it's worked fine because of the weakness in Euro, but I would, should be looking at something that uh, maybe like Euro Aussie or Euro um, Kiwi would probably be a little bit better one. Let's take a look at what would, you know, and, and see how good it is, how strong that move is. Uh, it's just, just straight down. So I didn't have the setup in those because I, you know, I trade the patterns, closed outside, ripped up, that failed, had another attempt and it just couldn't do it. I got in short here and I'm up uh, one and a half hour, it looks like right now. It's a great trade. Um, this could flip into something a little bit bigger. Uh, it has the potential, but with, um, with the yen being uh, so weak, uh, I don't wanna be long the yen so much. So as we take a step back, that's that's a clear downtrend. We're up at the top of it. Uh, if this is in a downtrend, this is going to move down to the bottom at 116 area, and that, that's going to turn out being a, a, a really great trade. Um, but we'll see. And also, and that, that concludes currencies. But also, you know, realize we are coming into this holiday week where uh, likely nothing will happen. This trading week was uh, one of my best weeks of the year. Really, really good trading week, and it has it has turned things around um, in a in a good way. I think in the markets with the bull quiet on equities and everything like that. So we're going to go ahead and end currencies here. One thing I want to note is that we do not have any economic data. I think uh, the only economic data we have this week is. Um, is the, uh, what did I see? Uh, I think Canada has something coming out this week. Uh, let me have a look at what I have. One thing, okay, I'm gonna cover that. A little quiet. There's, there's not much, the Aussie and, news, and the Looney are long. If Aussie fails, that's good. And, uh, you know, for our uh, not for that trade for me, but for the trend. And then it's holiday trading. So uh, there might be one or two trades this week. This this year is un, unlike last year. Last year was an amazing trading week during the holidays because we had just melted down and we had a bit of a flat, flash crash in there. It was just all crazy. This year, everything's going higher. Uh, I, would, I wouldn't be looking to do anything else. So that's, uh, that's what we got on currencies. I'm going to do a separate video for uh, the, the futures markets. And if you like this stuff, please comment, ask questions. You can hit me up on Twitter at Chris D. Macro. Um, let me go. You can catch me on Twitter at Chris D. Macro. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts. I just want to go over my process how I use the fail breakout, the fail ball breakout, and how I categorize my trading week. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, I will just go through and pop through boom, 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 and I'll do that on a weekly basis. I just like to take a step back here. Comment, like, subscribe. If you do subscribe, you'll get an email notification when I post new videos. Uh, if I am posting these more timely, then it's good to get that information. Thank you, everybody.